Honorable Christopher Komakid, who is the MP Arrow Sub County. Good morning to you, Honorable. Good morning, Priscilla. How are you? I'm good, how are you? First of all, how are the people of Aru? Uh, I should say uh, good morning, viewers. Uh, people of Aru, I wouldn't say they are not living in a different life uh, from the one people in, in any constituency are living. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a hard time. Uh, we have been through a season of drought. There's no rain. Uh, the future is so blurry for us mm -hmm. unless something happens. But mm -hmm. no, no, we'll, we'll get there. Okay. All right, so let's start off by a look at uh, UBOS. Last week, they refuted the report by World Bank that stated that we have not yet achieved middle income status. Key argument was the two factors of finding and basis of rating grip, as well as the GDP that are two national different economic aggregates from what they have versus what we have or versus what the president actually uh, declared to Ugandans in his State of the Nation address. So is this the last resort that we could have in reflecting on the issues that actually build up to a GDP but more so get us to a middle income status as is the commitment of the current government. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, that day the president announced uh, the middle income status. Mm -hmm. I remember I was there and we were like, really? You know, we all looked at each other. Is this happening now? The middle income status is not talked about. It's not preached. It's observed. You are going to tell us, Uganda, we are in the middle income status. That's a big jump mm -hmm. from where we are. Like figures, we could play with figures. One thing I appreciate about Ugandans, we have uh, gotten so many young land technocrats, and they are good at playing with figures. They'll, they'll sell you a dead monkey that it's a living monkey, right? Mm -hmm. But then how are you going to tell Ugandans that we are in a middle income status, yet the world is watching. If I'm smart, mm -hmm. I can assure myself smart, but my neighbor tell me, hey, look, wake up, yeah, you are looking brilliant. We can't do that. Right now, the budget, let's look at the budget, the 48 yeah, trillion. The, the first quarter was released, mm -hmm. and it was suppressed. Uh, I, had a, I have a leak uh, showing that uh, only 11 11% uh, of the 25 is released. Now, this will keep on going on. We'll go through the first quarter and we only have 11%. Yeah? Then they will show us in the next quarter, we'll give you the what? The, uh, the, the, the remaining the remaining 20, uh, 14%. But then we'll go to the next quarter, they'll still, still suppress it. At the end of the day, then they'll rush and dump all this money. We don't have time to utilize the money. Then this whole money is gotten back and taken back to it. So and funds. then they threaten you that they're going to take it back in case you don't use it, mm -hmm. and yet it has been given to you left. No, getting it back alone, it's a process. Yeah. I, have, I have a school, it's a Gomes uh, Secondary School. Uh, they released around a tune of 1.2 billion towards, uh, towards the last two months of the end of the financial year. After that, the money was withdrawn back. The school is told, we need that money back. You need to go through the Ministry of Finance, then get letter for more, to get, get this authorization. The MP is moving up and down. And that money was given to the school for the purpose of? For construction, a new secondary school. Which construction can Hasn't. happen in two Hasn't. months. In two months, it can't happen. Because you have to first, you know, get bids mm. and then award a contract. Mm. Now they'll skip the bids. Then they'll come up with a contractor, they'll end up with a building with cracks on the wall. Then before you know, uh, 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 we, we, have, we have someone complain, we have the Minister is getting in wastage of time. I understand. Yeah? You, you, Uganda is in a state where we have wasted lots of time. We have wasted much effort. And the leader, the president, seems to like awoken up and say, no, look, let's try to run mm -hmm. before we walk. But these things, you have to walk. You have to crawl, walk, then get there. And if we do not do this, we are going to crash. We want to live like our neighbors, we cannot. We want to live like Kenyans, we cannot. We are Ugandans. Let's accept the fact that we wasted pretty much of our time in the back and we are trying to recap. What other countries would do would, uh, would be like, no, can we throw out the president? But in a country like Uganda, where the president needs his position as a president, and I understand that with no, with no due respect, I would actually go to the, for the voters. Uganda is tricky in a way. The voters, in the, t uh, the time they really have to effect the change they need, they rely back and look on. I will tell you, the current president is his excellency, but the real president is the president who people didn't vote for. 
majority of Ugandans didn't vote. Now, the same majority of Ugandans are coming out now after the few Ugandans have voted, and they are like, no, this is our worst president. Let's go with what we have. We can only fight with the soldiers we have. We're not going to fight with the soldiers we don't have. So mm -hmm. it comes back to us, Ugandans. Okay, all right. Honorable, do you, away from the whole GDP and the argument that we've not yet arrived into the middle income status, is Uganda progressing economically? Uh, I would say Uganda is progressing economically. Yeah, that's true. But the whole world is progressing. You know, th there's when you feel like you are driving a car. Yeah, everyone is driving. Mm -hmm. But then there's that force that the entire world is progressing. You won't tell me the world is still at the same state uh, uh, the world was 10 years back. No. Every day, every second, something changes. It's mm -hmm. the dynamics of the world. Mm -hmm. Uganda is progressing, but the speed at which Uganda is progressing at isn't the speed we are supposed to, uh, to, uh, to, to, to ascertain. Something is pulling us back. Something is impeding. It's like they have hit a handbrake and we are accelerating, but we cannot go ahead until we try to release that handbrake, and we say, yeah, then we'll be on the speed up there. And what is hindering us from releasing these handbrakes that Politics. would allow us to accelerate? Politics. Ugandans, leave alone the fact we have a saying nowadays among us, uh, the young Ugandans, that Ugandans joke too much. No? But then in the real fact of economics, Ugandan politicize everything. Mm -hmm. Politics in everything. Uh, I need a minister. Politics should be there. There's a road construction. There's politics there. No, no you can't give the... Uh, no, who, who? The contractor is Komakech? No, Komakech is an independent. That, that contract needs to go to someone who supports the party. No. Is there a way we can just streamline our NDP? We're in NDP throw right now. Can we let the NDP throw uh, move smoothly rather than bringing in uh, our political interests and ideas? To, to affect the masses to vote for us. In other countries, this do not work. Mm -hmm. And you'll never see the day of light. No? If it's development, it's development. If it's politics, it's politics. Politics have ended, has ended way back. No? Can we look on shaping Uganda? Because at the end of at the end of the day, at the end of the term, we have another election in five years. Then we can go back to politicizing again. But Ugandans, from day one, at whatever level, be it LC1, LC2, come to, uh, to the councillors, come to the MP. R right now, I have swiss I wasted a whole year in court, politicking. Mm -hmm. Now, that whole year would have gone maybe into development. My resources, I would have put an, uh, my energy into maybe helping the youth, uh, maybe coming up with new legislation. No, the president, the president spent almost half of, the, half, of his, uh, half of his first year in court. Can we accept when it's defeat time? And can we move on? So I think politicizing everything is where we are, where we, we are lining. Well, as a member of parliament, what can be done? Because we need policies that actually can set progress, the kind of progress that you're speaking of. So what policies are there in place to set this progress for Uganda to achieve? We have many policies. Go to countries. I know you name. I've, I've, I've been in, Uga in, in, in USA. I've been in Sri Lanka. Uh, where, uh, where is the, the unrest now? Uganda have good, good, good policies. But? It's the social fabric conduct within us, the people. Ugandans have never realized what they want. Go back, look at all the leaders. I'm not the first person to speak about this. No. Dr. Shizabi has just spoken about it. M MPs have spoken about it. The Honorable Ogenga, like the Honorable Mouth, everyone has spoken about it. But they seem like we are hitting a dead end. Wh where is the real problem? Let's, let's go back deep and check the foundation. The foundation is me. The foundation is you. We could come up with all these policies. Leave on policy. We have legislations. Did you know that Uganda has the best legislation? South Sudan came and, 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 got, the, and, and, and got our constitution. Meaning we are smart, we are bright. Give mm. us one legislation that you feel is actually perfect, but implementation has failed. Uh, one legislation that I feel is actually uh, perfect and implement implementation has failed. Now, uh, I'll go for the, uh, the actual 2021 uh, uh, Mental Health Act. No. Uh, this Mental Health Act is actually a replica of the Mental Health, uh, in, the Mental Health Act in the UK. It was passed in 2021 up to now. It has never seen the day of light. In fact, the health workers don't even know about it. I, 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 try, to, uh, I try to sell it to them. And I, there you are. When was this act passed? 
And when we vote in the floor, I remember Honorable Sarah Pindi vote in the floor parliament, and the minister is like, no, we lack the finances, we're going back to the budget again. Yeah, uh, we lack the finances. No, we need to first restructure. Mm -hmm. We'll have every uh, every health worker in this particular section. Now there. Are Lots of such legislations lying back there. The legislations are there. Do the people know about the legislation? Mm -hmm. They don't. Mm -hmm. Do the police who are going to actually uh, enforce these legislations? No, they don't know. Legislators, have we done enough to go and talk to people? Civilized people know. But there's this. No, you are suffering, but there's this legislation. Does the police know? We don't. At the end of the day, parliament sits, comes up with the legislation, it's gotten taken to the archives and sleeps there. When we need something political, that's when the legislation will come out and catch up with you. Okay, all right. Well, that's the opening statements of Honorable Christopher Komaket. Uh, we're going to be joined by Sarah Birete, who is a political analyst, and we want to hear her side of the conversation before we go any deeper after this break. across the East African bloc is accelerating economic growth. Now, as Uganda is embarking on accelerating economic growth, uh, the government is taking cautious steps towards the National Development Plan 3 and also the Vision 2040 strategy that has been set out to depict Uganda's development priorities. The forthcoming opportunities are to ensure that Uganda develops a trajectory that is sustainable and according to these development goals, you're looking at ambitious climate change commitments, among other things that were pledged at the 21st conference in Paris to ensure that the growth is social, inclusive, and that the protection of the environment is upheld. But also as regards to the East African Legislative Assembly, the elections are getting heated up and we are looking at a future of Uganda Airlines as we see a new CEO that is being appointed. Now we do have the Executive Director for Constitutional Governance and that is Madame Sarah Birete joining us to help us analyze the situations at hand this morning. Good morning to you. Good morning. And good morning, viewers. You're most welcome. Thank you. So let's start off by uh, UBOS. Uh, it refuted reports from World Bank that Uganda has not yet achieved middle income status. Of course, the, the, the reasoning was uh, that World Bank was considering different statistics altogether and aggregates altogether to come up with what they referred to as Uganda has not yet achieved anything close to a middle income status. So what does this reflect on Uganda? Well, one would wonder why Uganda is so desperate to announce the middle income status. First of all, the, the average income of $10,046 should be maintained for three years, three consecutive years. That's when you announce that you've attained middle income status. So in allegedly the first year, we are in a rush and boxing each other to announce. Have we maintained this, mm -hmm. even if it was true? Why announce before the three consecutive years? Th that should be the first question. Second, there is controversy on the Uganda's population. Whereas World Bank says estimate is 46, the UBOS says 42. We last had the census in 2014. As per the last census, the population was 38.5 million, approximately. And we have been experiencing population growth rate of 3% per annum. So if you calculate that, the population is above mm -hmm. 46, even by estimate. Last year alone, the official statistics were put at 45 million. So you wonder who, <laughs> who is telling who and who should account for allegedly missing Ugandans. Secondly, we are coming out of a COVID pandemic where the reports for business people, both the small and medium income enterprises, as well as private sector foundation, estimate an economic uh, business loss of about 50%. So who is this that made much money during COVID, when everybody else was in lockdown, mm -hmm. when we lost businesses, when people lost jobs? Who is this person making money? So I think these people have lost touch with reality. They just look at themselves and their associates and the way they live large. And some of them might even wonder why we are not a first income country. <laughs> it's because of the way they live large at the expense of a taxpayer. So even if we had attained that income, 
Why not wait for the three consecutive years to announce? And then, of course, the controversy and the indicators. You have companies like Roco, which, are, which had applied for bankrupt last year. And now government is saying they must find money to buy shares to, to, to keep it afloat when they said they can't find money for teachers. So you have all this real misgovernance and extravagance of the economy. I think people in charge of this country have lost touch with reality. Okay. All right. Well, it opens a can of worms because now that means that w the question would be what statistics and uh, what information, what data was you boss using to actually come up with uh, what they stated that we have entered into middle. the middle income. But why status? not wait for three years? Even mm -hmm. if their data was right, what is the rush? Okay. All right. Let's look at the financial year <laughs> that we are currently in and the budget allocation. Does it actually speak to the different sectors and favoring development in the long run for the general Ugandan? I'll start with uh, Honorable Komakech. Yeah, uh, it, uh, thank you so much. It all goes back to the interest of the government. The interest of the government is security. Yeah. And then mm, chunks of money are bringing into security. Today in, a new, in the newspaper you've seen, uh, General Sat and they have been paid off, uh, yeah, it's okay. We can take off the, on that pay. But is it the time now? We need security for development. We understand that. But we are not at war, other than us going to pacify other countries, which is good for us to find the market. But then what is our fundamental uh, development plan? What do we want? Now, if you get the money that has been pushed into the budget, and then you bring in defense, then health comes, education comes, and every sector is crumbling. Are we going to rely on soldiers? And that has brought out the, uh, the, uh, the system or the effect of saying, now, uh, if you can't find good, co uh, good contractors, go to the army. You, doctors are striking, no, let's get the soldiers. No? So we are actually going back to a military what? A military government. Everything is just military. Will the budget still run that way? At the end of the day, we'll see supplementaries coming. Before even, uh, around the corner of parliament, there was already a minister speaking of supplementary budget coming up. We are like, then why did we draw this budget? Mm -hmm. to go, it all goes back. We need to check the Ministry of Finance and, and its team. I told you earlier on, we have these shrewd young men who have these PhDs and they can play around with figures. Ugandans, we are not, we are not good at figures. Majority of us are not, yeah? We'll just sit back and then when we start blowing figures, the common man is like, yeah, wow, where? There we are. Let's just leave it to them. Why don't we, why doesn't the president, because everything turns to the president at the end of the day. He, he, he's, the, he, he, he's the means of finance. He just delegates. Why can't he sit and say, no, give me the truth. Sarah just talked about it. Why are we rushing? But I brought it earlier on that we are rushing because the state feels like we have learned so much behind. And if we cannot crawl, we cannot walk, why don't we pretend like we are running? And then we get on there. Okay, all right. Uh, Sarah, we did have one of the summits of the African Union uh, coming out to speak on budgets for African countries. That if we are going to accelerate at the speed which Komaketch is referring to, we have to consider two sectors, education and health, giving them each allocation of up to 15% in budget considerations if we're going to match up with the Western world. In Uganda's uh, current budget for this new financial year, health and education are combined to make up a 15% and you still again have uh, defense taking the bigger chunk and other considerations. Where do we and see development in direction of education and health if we're going to match up competitively with the Western world? Well, I don't think that the current leadership can match up. You know, 36 years is a long time. I don't know how old you people are, but 36 years is a very long time. So you can't pretend to be running in your evening years when you could not run as a youth. I don't think they can. Mm. That's it. The, the rest is really posturing. They can't. Mm. They have outlived their stay. They, they can't pretend to have uh, ideas in their evening times. What is it that they could not get right 36 years ago that now they have found a magic bullet to fix it? I don't think so. It's more like it's, it's the same 
of what we've been experiencing, there's nothing new. I know that there's talk of the parish development model. B before COVID, we had the 36% of Ugandans out of the money economy. But after COVID, the figures shot up. Now people are talking of 68%. So if you look at, and then uh, our GDP, 80% of our GDP is generated from the greater Kampala. Mm -hmm. Kampala, Wakiso, Mukono, maybe Mpiji, and a few districts that have, that attain the middle, lower middle income status. Because we have seven districts that have attained lower middle income status, including Masaka, Mbarara, and Jinja. Mm -hmm. So you have the other districts. And of course, we keep multiplying them every other year. So we have a total of 132 districts. But you have your 80% of your income mm -hmm. coming from seven districts. What is happening in the rest of the districts? Mm. Yes, we are saying the parish development mode is a magic bullet. But we've seen these things. Already there are scandals on registration of beneficiaries. People are extorting money. So how different will it be? Okay. All right. Uh, what is your say also, Sarah, on MPs increasing their budget from 838 to 915? Is this progress or is this extravagance? Because um, Komakechi assured us <laughs> that this is not the right time to be, you know, adding salaries to defense. Uh, you know, uh, the report that has come out that they'll be earning 15 millions major and above when it comes to titles. And yet for themselves, there's uh, some sort of increment in that direction. Well, at uh, at the begin uh, the, at the beginning of the economic hard times, the president said we should all be frugal. But what we are saying is a struggling citizen. What we are seeing is a struggling citizen mm. and an extravagant leadership. The president alone spends one point eight million billion per day, and he's telling people to eat cassava. 1.8 billion, an estimate of 1.8 billion per day. The president and his wife and his staff. The wife earns other entitlements as a minister. The president likes telling people that his salary is 3.75 million. But I think that is making fool out of the people. If you have at your disposal 1.8 billion per day, all your costs are met by a taxpayer. Do you even need a salary? Do you need a salary? For what? Mm -hmm. you are, your clothes, your food, your medical, your envelopes that you go dishing out is all taxpayers' money. And you tell people that you earn that 3.5 million. So we have all these things. But for Parliament, I know that it was wrong to increase their allowances at this time. But on average, our parliament earns less compared to other parliaments in East Africa. So the problem with our parliament is not the amount they earn. The problem is the size. And they keep multiplying every five years. They are even going to make new constituencies. The current MPs have nowhere to sit. Even Rocco that was awarded the contract to construct a new par parliament chambers, they, there is nothing visible and we are saying we, we should earn them to, uh, add them 200 billion to bail them out. Okay. All right, Komaket, from the horse's mouth, is this uh, progress or is this extravagance? Uh, uh, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, Sarah. <laughs> uh, uh, let me speak as a member of parliament. Like, like, really, bring the picture out to people. But before I hint on that, I remember we have a saying in actually where they say that uh, before it gets better, uh, it has to first get worse. Mm -hmm. And when the NRM got, uh, NRA uh, took over the leadership to, to NRM now, people really were optimistic that things are going to get better. You know, I was a kid by then, <laughs> and you would line on the way as the president is coming. You, you line up from seven, you know, smartly dressed. Then the president comes uh, at around five. You are all hungry, but people had love, people had passion. You, you, you. I would see it from my my parents. They're like, yeah, this is it. Doesn't get any better than this. And over time, this passion has gone washed off. <laughs> Do you see still see kids lining on the way welcoming the president? Other than for the kabaka, no. That shows something. Now that that should bring us on. 
about the budget, you can spend your money the way you want it. I'll speak for parliament. It hasn't been easy for parliament the last year, to be real. I'm in the, I'm in the Committee of Foreign Affairs. Mm. I'm supposed to carry out an oversight role in embassies yeah, that, that are outside the country mission. But can you imagine I was locked up in a room, small room, and all I was hearing an ambassador or a commissioner are telling us we have a building of around 25 billion Ugandan shillings and it's at a 90% completion. And that's what they're telling me. I'm not seeing the building, I'm getting the figures. That was during a trip or here in Kampala? Here in Kampala. Members of parliament are supposed to go abroad. There, there was a ban, there was a curfew actually. No movement for members of parliament. Apparently, but you'll find ministers moving. Going out, you'd find uh, NRM delegates moving abroad. You'd find no new delegates moving abroad. Wh wh why the division? Why we member parliament? I'm getting taxpayers' money to a tune of 25 billion, and I'm investing it in Australia, yeah, uh, to, uh, to, to, to build a chancery. But then the person supposed to call the oversight is in parliament in a small room, and they are calling. We met all the ambassadors and the high commissioners, and these missions are both on phone. And all they'll give us are papers. When we ask them to travel and come to Uganda, they tell us we can't travel, we don't have the budget. Is it wrong? Parliament coming up with the budget to make sure at least can we kind of put something little into our pocket so that our members of parliament can go abroad and do the oversight role. So are these increments for those trips? Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, right Please now justify. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to justify. <laughs> I'm trying to justify. But all I know is uh, there has not been any increment in allowance, to be real. Uh, they came up with a suggestion. The president said, no, there won't be any increment for allowances. Now, wherever that money has come in, maybe the commissioners will come out and explain to us. So allocation will be as and per the need on mm. table. Uh, if I may ask you, you, you sit on the Presidential and Foreign Affairs Committee. Mm, no. It's on, it was separated. It was separated. It's now it's the Foreign Affairs Commission. Alone. It's oh, alone. Okay, but let me ask General as an MP. State House presented a budget of 421 billion. What justification did you have to increase it to 677 billion when you are telling citizens to eat cassava? The justification they had is well, well like well. You you, you had need to, not they had. You had because yeah. it's yeah. parliament yeah. which yeah. increased it, it, that it, budget. It's parliament that increased the budget, but then in a parliament where <laughs> ninety percent <laughs> <laughs> in a room. Yeah, we are in the and you say you tell arts you know, teachers we, we, you we are in no a dispensation and this goes back to uh, uh, sorry, uh, before you came I, 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 I told that the problem is not the government the problem is the people we are in a multi-party dispensation yeah? almost 90% of members of parliament come from one party to be real even if uh, the opposition came up and said you know what we are not going to pass at the end of the day the 90% will have sat and, and that's the NRM will say no this is what, what we are going for. It's the caucus, it's the rule from the top, and we're going to go with that. Where does the problem uh, come in? Do you expect parliament to really affect the changes people want? Parliament cannot. No, they presented right. their own budget <laughs> of 421 mm. billion. Why didn't you pass it like that? Why so, did you speak, it? Speaking of parliament, let's move on to the East mm. African affairs. I mean, this one is not going to end. They'll, we will never get a satisfactory answer that benefits the average Ugandan eating cassava. But on the East African Legislative Assembly, you, the rest is on and, you know, the, the preparations are on. And you've had 130 candidates coming out to say they're interested in the six available seats on the Legislative Assembly, of which that list has been shortened down to 60. Uh, but that's a lot still. So in regards to his preparations, uh, rumor has it that these positions are even already ring-fenced. What is your say, Sarah? You know, according to the East African Treaty, members of the East African Parliament are supposed to represent all political shades in the National Parliament. When it comes to Uganda, the lion's share goes to Enarium. What are the political? The, the first question should be: What are the political sheds in our national parliament? You have NRM, you have NUP, you have DP, UPC, People's Progressive Party, and JEMA. FDC, FDC. and FDC. Mm -hmm. Eight. So, if we were to follow the East African Treaty, you would have these parties having one MP. And maybe the extra one goes to independence because we also have independence. That would be representative 
of the political shades in our national parliament. The people who claim to be the, f the people fronting the East African Federation, mm -hmm. the more interested in federating, are the number one people abusing the East African Treaty. There was even a challenge by Honorable Mkasambide on this same fraud on representation. And what people did, they said, now you, since you've won, because the East African Court of, of Justice ruled, mm -hmm. that to go back and ensure that the representation from Uganda is a true reflection of the political shades in your national parliament. Because that's what the treaty provides for. So they said, no, for you, you go through. And then <laughs> the political shades are still not represented. Mm -hmm. So when you have uh, the NIM said they will return their six yes. incumbent mm -hmm. MPs. I hope they were all serving their first term because they are as term limits. Mm, they, are, they are serving their first terms. Yeah. Also, yeah. So that leaves three slots for the other seven political sheds in our national parliament. Mm -hmm. How are they supposed to be represented? So still our representation as a country is a fraud and I call upon the stakeholders to challenge it. Okay. Kobo Kate, how is this move actually affecting those that are upcoming? Because now in the, the applicants, uh, there were so many young people that were interested in these particular positions. And so they have expressed interest, but then again, there's no room for the sheds, but more so, there's not much consideration for those that are upcoming, such as yourself. Thank you so much. Uh, just like Sarah said, uh, the East African Parliament is supposed to be a representation of actual Ugandan Parliament. Among us, the six who are there, I don't see a youth. Uh, we had uh, we had the disabled, uh, the late Honorable Kasama. Uh, the, uh, it was actually it was a, a fraud that it became one. They took advantage of the situation. Okay, I think we have a what? Uh, uh, we have a disabled person. Let him take over that, mm -hmm. that position. But the numbers coming up, one uh, uh, youths youths have turned up. And among its almost the 130, uh, the 126 uh, uh, aspirants who came up before the ring first, youths were, were very many. We saw, we saw them come up in parliament. Why, why are they rushing into it? I personally, I would want to run away from the debate uh, for the Ayala uh, members of parliament and go back to the core principles. Is East African Corporation actually building up Uganda? Well, it's something that Uganda wants to impact or impeach onto other countries. We have looked at Kenya. Kenya several times have banned our products. You know, we are not selling our eggs to Kenya right now. They first banned the milk. Now, when there is a surplus in their country, that's when they ban ours. When there's a shortage, they open that, the gates. And we have been lenient. You'll never hear Uganda taking a what? A forward stretch. But then, come to the common people. Because East Africa, is, is the East African community is not about the president. No, it's not about MPs. It's about the common people. Are the people ready for the integration? Do they even want it? Do they even know it? I would come up with a solution. If they want to really sell East Africa, let's remove the top what? Uh, the, the, top, uh, the top bottom rule. Let's, let's start from the bottom to what? To the top. Right now, I can bet, should the president of Uganda desist or get thrown out of his seat, the East African Federation is going to crumble. Because it's one man who has the future. Look at Kenya. We are going to have a new president. It could be uh, it could be Roto. It could be Raila Odinga. Uh, look, look at uh, look at Tanzania. Tanzania has already, we have already always had that fragile relationship between Tanzania and, and Uganda coming up. Can you categorically categorically show me if it's really that important that members of Parliament in Yala have effected to solving issues in East Africa? Not even a day. I can assure you. Okay. Rwanda went to Rwanda closed the borders. What did Yala do? They all went they all went quiet. The borders closed until someone's son came up and then you played what he played with the uncle and wow, the borders were what? Were open. Although Is, goods are not allowed. Although goods are not allowed, maybe they will <laughs> we'll get there. So I'm asking myself, are we dreaming or it's an interest of uh, 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 of someone who really wants to shift? Actually, me, I would want East African uh, community to progress. So that maybe after 36 years, we could uh, maybe have another president coming up into power. President Museven uh, has dreams of becoming the first president of East Africa. And we really applaud that so much. But you go to Kenya, they'll tell you, if as long as you are bringing us your president, we are not ready for it. Go to Tanzania. So <laughs> what's on the ground? We could go for elections. It's OK. 
it's good, it's good that we are giving jobs to our um, to okay. our political leaders who lost in elections. Yeah, most of them, most of the other, uh, by the, most of the other members of parliament come from Uganda. They get the position as a token mm, of maybe appreciation for their contribution to the country. Uh, speaking of which, um, I, do you see these polls as a reflection of increased interests in regional issues, or is it what people use as last resort, especially those that have had political failure in <laughs> parliament here, uh, using these opportunities, jumping onto this particular train to be able to, you know, have self-interests awarded? Majority of our politicians, unfortunately, are job seekers. You can put that at 80%. Mm -hmm. Is it that too high? No. Bring it to 50%. Uh, maybe it can be low. It could be low. <laughs> they are job seekers. Be it in our national parliament, mm -hmm. be it the ministers, be it they are just bothered about their paycheck. There are few people who are really bothered about the ideology, about the welfare of the people. So that's what we have at our political scene. For East Africa, there has been proposals that these MPs should be elected by, directed by the people, maybe per region, because even now there are regions represented. Mm -hmm. So if you have an uh, uh, an ARA MP representing Northern Uganda, can you have Northern Uganda vote for that person directed? Then maybe we can go away from this fraud of NRM representation at ARA. And me, my message to NRM is simple. As long as you maintain that fraud, forget about the East African Federation because you are distancing the people from the community, from the integration. What do we have a business? People looking for market for their products. Actually, we could limit East African affairs to economic cooperation and integration because the politics is not going to take off until you move away from fraud mm -hmm. and make it about to the people. Okay, all right. Speaking of the people, a young person, and in regards to the East African integration process, of course, we need the young people to take this forward. It was enacted, it's in place, but then it's the young generation that should push it forward. But there are challenges that are hindering youth's participation in politics, and also, how do you get to attract young people to participate actively in such things? Uh, mm, the system. You need to beat the system. The system in leadership currently does not give room for the young people to come up. Like from 100%, only two, maybe two or three percent will go through. It, everything has been monetized. Who is the young man going to get the money, for God's sake? Good fathers. Yeah, good fathers. Where are the, good, <laughs> the good fathers have interest, and, and this is taking. The, no, we have reached a level whereby uh, you, leaders are not, uh, are not elected because of their ability because of their uh, level of understanding. Leaders are elected because of their uh, level of money in their pocket. How easily can you dash out the money? And then you become a leader there, you, you, you win the seat. Now, as the, I've, been, I've been in the uh, uh, youth, uh, United Nations uh, Youth uh, Parliament. I, I, I'm pleased to have served in 2014 in that position. But when you look at the quality, of leadership in United Nations, yeah, we are 20 years back. A youth would stand and articulate issues. A youth who is at 14 years. I remember by that time I was around, uh, I was around 17 years, but we wouldn't compare to them. They really stand, and it's, it isn't about money. They'll tell you who brought you here. Um, my father. My father is actually a farmer. I'm like not a politician, no. And then I was the only one. I I slid through the window. Uh, uh, through, through my, my ways also. I, I, won't, I, won't, I won't come up and say. But if we want the young people to actively participate, you know, let's start, let us not preach uh, water and we're drinking wine. You want the young people to, uh, to come and participate? Come up, cheer them up, help them up. Youths are now lost in social media and addiction. Who is addressing that? Do you know that we have more addicted youths than even patients who are suffering from COVID, who died of COVID? Every day, go to Butabika. Every day, in every shift, I used to work there. In every shift, you get to admit around 10 youths. 10 youths. These are youths that are going to recover. Because addiction is a chronic illness. 
doesn't go. No, <laughs> the rate of which we are losing the youth. But there's we have a country, or we have a, uh, we have an East African Confederation whereby nothing has been done to save the future of these youths. And if we want to, let's bring them on, teach them. Let's go back to the culture, the African culture way. And then we, uh, well, we, uh, we teach them on what leadership is. How can we embrace you in? Should we, uh, maybe we could even put incentives mm -hmm. for you to, to participate in politics. That, you know, there's this, uh, there's this uh, 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 incentive for you. If you're a youth and you're going to, partic uh, to participate in politics, we give you what? We give you this amount of money to what? To accelerate your political career. All right, thank you so much, Honorable Komakech. Now we move on to the other uh, Kickstarter for this morning, and that's the Uganda Airlines. Now, last week we did have President Museveni appointing a new CEO, Jennifer Bamturachi, and uh, that's amidst the scandals and the frauds that have marred the Uganda Airlines, especially from COVID 19 and post COVID 19. And the big question on Ugandans' minds is has she earned her appointment? through good performance as an acting portfolio? Sarah. Well, this part, uh, unfortunate for Jennifer, because I don't know her. The appointment comes amidst the fraud. The applications process was still ongoing. One day, people were still, I assume people who were interested in the job, who were preparing their, dusting their CVs mm -hmm. to apply for the job. Mm. So when a job is advertised, you assume that once the deadline for application closes, then there is vetting, shortlisting, interviews, and an appointment. So you have Miss Jennifer, unfortunately, appointed without due process. So in the eyes of Ugandans, she's a fraud. It does not matter whether she's competent, whether she qualified for the job, she has come on the job on the ground of fraud. Will she perform? Mm -hmm. So that everybody is suspicious of her. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what the rush was about or why did they advertise the job in the first place. And, um, and I wish some people who applied for that job can take this appointment to court. Okay. All right. Well, that's another conversation that we shall continue. But thank you so much, Sarah, and thank you so much, Koma Cage, for your contributions to our Kickstarter this morning. Come